Hey everyone, it's me again, Aquastar. I'm here with another little bit of a sad update for everybody. Um, little Flutter Butters isn't doing too well. She's gotten very weak over the last three, four, five days. Uh, she's still eating. She's actually eating right now, but she's just kind of lethargic and hanging around at the bottom of the tank, as you can see. She's not really moving around the tank much like she usually does. Uh, Flutter Butters has had some problems for a while. She's been having some, I think, mild swim bladder issues. They're not too serious, uh, but more so she's got these little tumors on her other side. You can't really see them from this side, but they're on the other side of her. Uh, others who follow my channel, you know, know what I'm talking about, these little white gross on the side I don't know if they're cancerous or not they very well could be um, or she's just a sickly fish uh, she started developing these gross these little tumors probably about six seven months after I had her um, and she's had them now for about two years I've had flutter butters for almost almost two years now so and she's had the tumors about a year and a half um, as you can see, she's not moving around much at all. I'm just so sad. Um, I love Flutter Butters. I was close to Little Pickles, but I am very close to Flutter Butters. So, if she does pass, I, I have a little coffin for her that I'm going to put her in. It's a little wooden jewelry box. It's very beautiful. Um, but, yeah, I'm going to be really upset. And I'm pretty sure she's kind of heading that way. As you can see, she's just kind of giving up. Um, so yeah, you guys keep me in your thoughts and prayers. Flutter Butters is really sensitive to nitrates and nitrites and ammonia. And of course, I've had her over here. I gotta scrub some of that hard water off the sides. There's a little bit on there. You can't, yeah, I gotta scrub some off. But I had her over here, but where I took all that sand out, I think that, you know, I threw my bacteria, my beneficial bacteria back a few steps. The other fish seemed to be doing okay, but when I had Flutter Butters over here, she wasn't enjoying it at all. Um, she even got one little spot of ammonia burn on her belly. She, um, and I added my prime and everything, the water changes, it just happens. She's always been real sensitive to that. So, she, like even in her best health, she's always the first one that gets affected by ammonia. Or anything going on in the water it was like she's always one of the first ones so but as you can see Loki's he's doing okay um, I also think the fish haven't been as active because I've been having my air on like you wouldn't believe it is kind of cold in here so I think that they're not as active because of that too but flutter butters with her little tumors on her side and then even this eye you I don't know if you can really tell but this eye facing us right now has like a little coat of film over it the other one doesn't so flutter butters just isn't the most healthiest fish as it is um, and then I think that the stress of the ammonia and the move and the change I think set her back a little bit but yeah it's like what I said if something happens to flutter butters it's really going to affect me I love the little pickles but I adore flutter butters flutter butters is the fish that's in my little profile picture here on YouTube uh, that's looking right at me. She always looks right at me. She makes eye contact. She's the sweetest one by far. Just the most friendliest goldfish. Um, so yeah, she's just not doing the best. And you're so pretty, honey. Now you guys can see those tumors. Uh... There's a little piece of sand kind of caught underneath one of the scales, but it's been there for months and months. I don't think that's causing the problem. Um, and she does have another little tumor coming up underneath, just behind or underneath the bigger one. So that very well could be what's going on with Flutter Butters. Is she could be having tumors on the inside that we just can't see. Uh, but this really is the thing about fish. Let me Let me turn down this game real quick, guys. Hold on. is the thing about a uh, fish any kind of fish in general they they're not going to be as it seems like that they're 
I think it goes into like where the, the one reason probably why they have so many babies like they do is it seems like that there is a lot of uh, genetic faults in fish. Like you'll see more fish born deformed than you would in a mammal or in an avian creature, a bird or something. You will see more deformities, dysfunctions, diseases in any type of aquatic animal, which I think especially fish, than you will see like in mammals and birds, which I think plays into why they do have so many babies because out of a hundred babies, half of them aren't going to make it to five years old and then the other half of the half ain't going to make it to ten years old. You know, it's just they're, you know, some, some, blah, most and some of them die with even the first couple years of life, you know, so um, they're, they're fragile. They are. Fish are, are fragile and especially when you take a fish that has been genetically altered and bred and probably inbred to obtain certain qualities and appearance like these Aranda fish from PetSmart that probably weren't bred the best. That's where a little Flutter Butters is from. Um, you know, nobody's checking to see if the parents have problems or anything. They're just throwing some Arandas together and breeding them. They very, very well could be brother and sister, father and daughter, mother and son. And that's probably what's happened with my little sweet Flutter Butters. She's been doing great till up to like the last week or so. She just probably wasn't bred right, or she even if she was, she's just she caught some kind of gene in that gene pool, and it's got her growing those little growths and just not doing that well. So I love flutter butters with all my heart and soul. She is one of the ones that I am the closest to. It's like what I said, I loved little pickles. I cried over pickles. Flutter butters, I'll literally like have to take a time out from life if something happens to her. So, because it's, um, this is one of the sweetest fish you could ever have. She always stayed up in my hand. She's just very sweet. She, um, she's still picking and pecking, but I've learned that that doesn't mean much. I still see it as kind of a good sign, but it's really not because both Daphne and Pickles ate up until the last few hours before they died. Um, it's, I think it just shows that they are happy and they're stimulated and they like to eat, but that's about it. It doesn't mean that their health is necessarily improving. And one thing I've learned about goldfish is... They can get better for a few days and then just go downhill really quick. So, it does kind of make me feel better though because I've seen other really great goldfish keepers here on YouTube. It's a wonder about like our modern day, the internet and YouTube and stuff is that we can learn from each other and then we can even, you know, kind of feel better whenever something happens to us that's out of our control because we see other people that's went through it in the same hobby, you know, but, you know, even people like Solid Gold and just others, you know, they, they experience, experience these, these deaths and sudden downfalls and health and well-being, and it's, it's very puzzling sometimes, though, with Flutter Butters, I don't, it isn't, because you can see she's got those little gross. You know, she hasn't exactly been doing great even over the past few months, but she, of course, was more active than this. Um, usually she is, she kind of has a little bit of swimming problems, but usually she's all, she is all over the tank in general. And more so, she's usually up here right in my face, begging for food constantly, even right after I feed her. I'm glad that she's picking and pecking, but I, I just, yeah. But it does make me feel good because even people like Solid Gold and others, you know, experience these things. Uh, what happened to Solid Gold several months ago or a year ago when literally all of her fish caught this weird disease or parasite that wiped out her whole collection, her little goldfish family. It's it's so sad. Um, so, I mean, I am thankful that it doesn't seem like it's affecting other fish, whatever's going on with her. 
it's like what I said, I think it's something very isolated and individual with flutter butters. I think it's those tumors or something. It has something to do with that. Um, I'm never going to pull her out and do surgery on her for those because like what I said, she's had those for maybe the last year, year and a half. And, you know, she acted fine just now. She's starting to kind of act not so good. Um, so just keep keep flutter butters in your prayers. It's like what I said. She's the one in my profile picture. And that day that I took that picture, she was like staring right at me. She's just the sweetest thing. Um, she just sit and look at me. And actually, Nilly being used to until she got a grudge against me for picking her up. But flutter butters, it doesn't matter how many times I pick her up, what I do with her, she's still loves me, trusts me. She, I think she just feels that I don't mean her any harm. So just keep her in her prayer, in your prayers, guys. And if you're going through something like this right now too, and you just know in your heart that it's out of your control, it's nothing that you did, do not feel bad about it. You can cry, but just try to, if something happens, you know, just try to work past it and look at it like, you know, their genetics are just so much different than ours. Like how they have so many babies and out of all the babies, so many have to be called and killed even shortly after birth because they're deformed. You know, a lot of them are very deformed. Um, and then even more so, you know, in the next year or two of life, some of them develop these things like tumors and gross and kidney failure and just things. They just goldfish where they've been so modified in their breeding and probably inbred, well, in fact, I know they've been inbred, you're going to get situations like this. You know, you're going to get some fish that are healthy as an ox. At probably out of one batch of fish, one clutch of eggs from one fish, you'll get some that are big and, and healthy and robust, like Nilly Bean is. Very healthy fish. I don't think she's ever been sick a day in her life, knock on wood. And then you'll get others like flutter butters that, you know, within several months of life is developing gross, ain't swimming so good, maybe got swim bladder issues, or even other things internal that you don't even know what it is and the fish suddenly goes downhill and dies. So just keep that in mind that it's usually not your fault. Um, if you know that you're doing everything that you can, they got plenty of space, clean water, good food. You've treated them, you know, you, you treat them a couple times a year for flukes and maybe a dose of general cure or something. Like, you've done everything, you know, but this still happens. Just don't beat yourself up about it and try not to get too sad. Um, I'm more so kind of talking to myself right now because it's just, I love flutter butters. I, I like, I mean, I hate to say this, but I'm just being honest. I'd much rather it be Benny Jets. <laughs> Because he's not close to me at all. He's actually getting worse. He won't really eat out of my hands and stuff. We're just not close. I still would be very sad if it died. I still would be heartbroken and feel bad for the fish. Um, and I'd bury him out in the flower garden just like the rest of them. But flutter butters? Oh, oh my God. Just heartbreaking. So keep me and little flutter butters in your prayers. Thanks for watching, everyone. I'll see you soon. Bye.